If you're thinking of upgrading your AMD CPU and moving to a newer model to improve the performance of your system, then you might have some questions. In theory, it's pretty easy to do, but you might be wondering about whether you need to update your BIOS, whether you need to reinstall Windows, what other things you need to be aware of, what changes to your system you need to make, and more. I'm here to show you all those different things and a lot of different hints and tips along the way that will hopefully help. Now, in theory, it's pretty straightforward, especially with what I'm doing, which is moving from a Ryzen 7700X to the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. At the time of making this video, that's a worthy upgrade because this is one of the best gaming CPUs on the market. And that change is a couple of years difference. So it's moving to a pretty new CPU versus an older one. However, it is worth knowing that this CPU is a AM5 platform, so it requires AM5 socket motherboard. And so does the older CPU. So it's a pretty easy swap because they both work with the same socket type. Historically, AMD CPUs used pins on the CPU, and now those pins are on the motherboard, so it's a completely different socket design. So if your motherboard and your PC is, let's say, five or six years old, or or maybe older than that, you might not be able to make that move. If you're running an AM4 or older socket motherboard, then you won't, won't be able to do that swap. So there are a few things to think about there. Now, there are some ways to work out what CPU you can upgrade to. The first thing to do is to work out what motherboard you're on, and I'll show you some hints on how to do that in a minute. Once you've got that information, you can head over to the motherboard manufacturer's website, onto the page specifically for that motherboard, and then you should be able to see a list of all the supported CPUs that you can use and then work out from there which is the newer and more powerful model that you can then swap into your system to upgrade it. Alternatively, what you can do with that information, the name of your motherboard, take that head over to PC Part Picker, put that into their system, and then you can search for your motherboard in particular and then you'll be able to see which CPUs are compatible with it, which are available, and which is the latest that you can then swap into that system. And that's one way of doing it. Unfortunately, it might be that if your system's a lot older that you have to move to an entirely new motherboard, and then obviously that requires other things, like maybe new RAM as well, and other parts, and it requires a lot more upgrades. If you're looking to just swap your CPU, it can be straightforward, but it really depends on the age of your system and what you're trying to do. So I'm going to show you various different things along the way here. Now in theory, if you've got a swap like I have, where you're going from 7700X to the 9800X 3D, it's pretty easy to do. You might not need to do a BIOS update, although I will caveat that by showing you some things later on that are worth bearing in mind. And all you need to do is to swap the CPU out, renew your thermal paste, and then reinstall and set up and go ahead there. So I'm going to show you the hints for that, but it is, in theory, a really easy swap and something that you can do to your system which will really help improve things. So if you're fortunate enough to have an AM5 CPU already and then you're moving to a new AM5 CPU, then I'm going to show you the installation process and the really straightforward setup here. And then I'm going to get into some other things that you need to be aware of including BIOS updates, and I'm also going to show other things. So jump to the relevant points with the timestamps down below if you need to. But first of all, turn your PC off, obviously. Disconnect it from the power. Lay it flat somewhere that you have easy access to. And then we need to remove the CPU cooler, which will require loosening the four screws around the outside of it and then disconnecting the cable. So in this instance, the cable from this cooler is plugged into the CPU fan header or AIO pump header on your motherboard. You'll need to remove that and then just gently remove the CPU cooler. Now, obviously, once we've done that, you'll see a thermal paste both on the CPU and on the copper plate of the cooler. We'll need to clean that off in order to reuse this for the new CPU. So I'd recommend using Noctua's cleaning wipes. These are really easy wipes to use. I use them in a lot of builds. It's very straightforward. Basically, a nice wipe that you can use to clean up both the CPU cooler and your CPU as well. This is important to do because obviously we want fresh thermal paste for the new CPU. If you're using your system for a while, the thermal paste on the contact plate might well have dried up, so it won't be as effective. So it's worth cleaning that off and rejuvenating your thermal paste. Also, I'd recommend just cleaning up the old CPU before you try and take it out of the socket so things don't get messy when you're removing it and you end up with thermal paste in places you don't want it. So you can use that wipe on here as well just to clean that up. And then obviously 
you can do whatever you want with the CPU once you remove it and put it into storage. To remove the old CPU, you just pull this latch by basically pushing it down a little bit, opening the lever, and then take the hatch off the top. And then you need to take the CPU out with great care. So make sure you've got a good grip on it. You need to just pick it up and pull it out of the socket. Be careful though, because if you drop it onto the pins, you might well damage them. It's worth having a look at this point to make sure none of the pins are bent, that everything looks as it should. You can see that it's uniform basically across the socket there, so there shouldn't be any issues. If you're not immediately installing the new CPU, I'd also recommend using the plastic shield, which hopefully you've got in your old motherboard box somewhere around, and put that on top to protect the socket. If, however, you are immediately installing, then you don't need to worry necessarily. So we've got the new CPU here, the 9800X3D, and we're going to put that into the socket now. So you basically remove that latch, and then we're going to seat that new CPU down into the socket here. You can see there's a plastic notch at the top and bottom of the CPU socket, and that lines up with the CPU as well. So you just got to gently seat that back down in place, and then put the latch back down and secure that into place there. Now we're going to need some new thermal paste. Obviously, there are various different options out there, and I'll leave a link to some in the description. I'm using some Asus ROG thermal paste that I'm to have knocking around here, but you might like to use Arctic, for example, and put that on. Put a blob into the middle there, and some people will say that's enough, but I personally prefer to spread the thermal paste across the top of the CPU to make sure there's a good uniform coverage across the top there. You do need to make sure you're not using too much or too little and that it's got good coverage across there. There isn't any gaps and there isn't loads of massive lumps on it. And you will find that when you put the cooler down over the top, that will press it flat anyway, but you obviously need to make sure you've got enough thermal paste. Then it's seating the cooler back down over the top and securing it with the thumb screws into the four corners around the CPU socket. I'm assuming, of course, that you're reusing your cooler. You might want to take this opportunity to use a new cooler at the same time. But if you want to just reuse your old one, you can do in most instances. It's the same setup here, so it should be straightforward enough to do. Just need to obviously re-secure those screws around the outside and make sure they're nice and tight. They're secured all the way and fully tightened up in each corner and then don't forget to plug that cable back in for the CPU fan header or AIO pump header depending on your cooler setup. That's very important to make sure your motherboard can recognize that nicely. So you've got a pretty straightforward swap there as you can see and you should then just be able to go about using your PC as you were before. You might be wondering whether you need to update your BIOS though. Now this might not be essential, but it could be worth doing and it is worth checking your motherboard manufacturer's website for this. Because as you can see, mine is quite out of date. It has changed quite a few versions since this was set up. So if you head over to the relevant website, to your specific motherboard website, and then over to the support pages, what you'll find there is a list of the different BIOS versions. So under here somewhere you should find a drop down for the BIOS setup and versions there. Click on that and then you'll see a list of the BIOS updates. In there you might well see things like improved support for your particular CPU or optimized memory compatibility and other things and stability improvements as well. For the 9800X3D CPUs, the performance has been optimized through a number of these BIOS updates, so it might well be worth doing in this instance. You download the BIOS into a USB stick, and I've got separate guides on how to do this for different motherboards, but usually you'd put it onto a USB stick, head over to the BIOS, head over to the relevant tool, in this instance it's QFlash on a Gigabyte motherboard, then you find the BIOS file on the USB stick that you've got, and then basically point the tool at it and go about the update process. Now this can be quite intimidating because you have to be careful not to turn off your PC during the process. It can take some time. PC might reboot several times during it, but it is worth doing and it should improve stability and performance of the system and it might well enhance it. So it's worth doing at the time of upgrading your CPU as well. Now, if you're not sure what CPU you can use in your motherboard, then I'm going to show you a few different things to find out and things that will be interesting and useful to help you discover what motherboard you're using if you're not sure, for example. But if we take this Gigabyte motherboard, for example, if you head over to the support pages, you'll see there's a section here for CPU support. So you can then get a list of CPUs that are supported by your motherboard. So this is one way of doing it. If you know what your motherboard is, you can Google it 
head over to the relevant site and then you'll find on the support section that most motherboard manufacturers will have a list like this with CPUs that are supported so you can see all the different models that are supported and the ones that are available to be able to be used in here. So you can see, for example, that the Ryzen 7 7700X is there, so that's the original one that I had, and then the 9800X3D is in here, as well as the newer 9950X3Ds as well. So you've got a number of different CPUs that can easily be used in here, and you can easily upgrade too, so that's a nice, easy way of doing it. If you're not sure what motherboard yours is then we'll show you a way to find that out as well there's a program called cpu z that you can download and install on your system is free so it's easy to run so if you're not sure what your motherboard is you can use this this will actually show you a few different things of interest first of all if you're not even sure what your processor is you can see under the cpu section it's listed so the ryzen 7 7700x is listed here then you'll see it's a socket am5 Pay attention to that. You've got the full setup of the CPU name as well. So you can pay attention to that too. And then if you click on the main board section, we can see the motherboard manufacturer, which in this case is a Zeus, and then the model, so the Strix B850A gaming Wi-Fi. From here, you can also get an idea of the BIOS version as well, which can be handy too. So we'll see down here, for example, the BIOS version is currently 1022, so that's for this particular motherboard. You can then head over to the motherboard manufacturer's website and check to see whether that's the latest BIOS or whether you need to do a BIOS update. But you can use this information, so we know we've got the Strix B850A gaming Wi-Fi on PC Part Picker. So over on PC Part Picker, you can start your build. So this allows you to find various different things. What we're going to do is going to use this to find our motherboard. So we're going to search for it. So if you go here and go Strix B850A Gaming Wi-Fi, you can see this is the board that we want to use. And then once you've done that, you'll then be able to find the relevant CPUs. So you can see from the list, now we click and it will show you compatible products so you've now got a list of the different CPUs that you can use in here. So we can see the Ryzen 7 7700X, which is my original. And then you'll see the 9800X3D listed here as well. This gives you an idea of all the different CPUs. So you can see which ones you can use in this setup. And obviously the more expensive ones at the top here will be the newer models. But this allows you to just check at a glance and see which ones will work in your system really easily. So PC Part Picker can be a handy way to work out. If you use that in combination with CPU Z, you can find out not only your motherboard, but also your BIOS version and other things that will be useful for this process if you don't know what parts you've got in your PC already. I've been asked whether you need to reinstall Windows when you're swapping out a CPU, and generally speaking, the answer is no. You shouldn't need to do a fresh install of Windows. It should work just fine with your current Windows installation. As said, you might have had to update your BIOS. You might want to get some chipset drivers. There might be new drivers available for your motherboard as well. Check your motherboard software and the manufacturer's website for that. But generally speaking, even a BIOS update might be enough, or you might not even have to do that. So it's a pretty straightforward setup as long as you've got the right socket of motherboard to support the newer CPU. Hopefully this has been a helpful video. Don't forget to check out the links in the description to things I've talked about here. And thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.